Welcome to What's Happening in Hanover, brought to you by the Town of Hanover, Hanover Chamber of Commerce, 91.3 FM Blue Water Radio, and Whiteman TV. Hi, and welcome to What's Happening in Hanover. I'm your host, Jennifer Olivero, along with Adam Olivero. Today we're talking with Corrine at Jadorn in downtown Hanover. We're also interviewing John Grant, who's been selected to be a torch runner for this year's Pan Am Games in Toronto. And Adam will be talking with the Hanover community players about their new play, Nana's Naughty Knickers. <laughs> This is Jennifer Olivero, and I'm here with Corrine. Congratulations on opening your new store, J'adorne, and we're in downtown Hanover, uh, right across from the Giddy Goblin mm -hmm. and Universal Pond. So, congratulations, I should say. Thank you. Your store is beautiful <laughs> in here. Thank you. Um, you have a very, um, you know, French garden, shabby chic, but beautiful. Thank you. Yes. Beautiful look. Yes. Yeah. We. Um, this is our second location, actually. Our first uh, storage Jadorn is in downtown Kincardine, and we're celebrating. May first will be our fifth birthday of that Jadorn. So we just opened this one um, right at the very beginning of April, and we're really thrilled to be in Hanover. But it's the same look and feel. Very European. Very French. Italian. A lot of. Um, garden influence a little victorian influence a lot of sparkle a lot of shine a lot of glitter all kinds of pretty things for people pretty yes and glitzy mm -hmm. i notice a very beautiful mirrored and rhinestone tissue box yes like <laughs> yes. if you're gonna blow your nose you might as well do it classy Absolutely they're gorgeous That's right. yes yeah. um you're also carrying the annie sloan chalk paint yes we are um so what is what is special about that well we i became a stockist for annie sloan's chalk paint decorative paint a year ago april 1st in kincardine and it is a decorative paint i would say 90 percent of our customers are using it to repaint wooden furniture. But you can put it on anything. You can paint concrete, you can paint glass, plastic, wood, brass, um, brick, anything. And people are finding amazing ways to use it. But most of the time it's on furniture. We also offer workshops to teach people how to use it themselves. It's fun and it's addictive and it's amazing. So just to clarify, uh, the Annie Sloan chalk paint is not chalkboard paint right. that is now also very trendy for painting right. absolutely everything. Yes, this is the upcycle generation for sure. And a lot of us are getting beautiful furniture from our grandparents or an aunt or something. They're gorgeous. They're solid wood. They're beautifully carved. They're beautifully built but they oftentimes do not fit in with our look at home. And it might be an orangey brown or something. And so what they're doing is they're painting it to go with their own things. And there are people that say, oh, I'm not sure about painting heirloom furniture. But I look at it like this way. If your grandmother gave you her wedding gown to wear and wanted you to wear it, but if it didn't fit you, of course she would want you to alter it so it fit you and looked beautiful for you on your wedding day. And I think with this, a lot of the times it's like that. You inherit a beautiful piece of furniture, you make it fit your lifestyle, and you could get another 50 years out of it, 100 years out of it. Exactly. Gone is the days when it's, you know, don't touch it, it's an antique, never, never, ever, you know, Absolutely. refinish or repaint. And they well, get dinged, they get scratched, and sometimes just because it's an antique doesn't mean it shouldn't get a little bit of love. Yes, and just like today, in the old days, sometimes things were well made, sometimes they weren't. So you have to learn to know the difference. There may be a beautiful antique that should not be touched with paint, and then people should have a uh, have it evaluated and see what what it, it, you know whether they should be able to paint it or not. There are some pieces that you shouldn't, um, but most of the time, it was just as mass produced then as it is nowadays, or it's just. Um, a piece that, like you say, they're damaged, they have watermarks, they have dings and nicks over the years, and then people try to recreate that look anyway. But a lot of times it needs refinishing, so there's no reason not to paint. And then you might as well have it match what you've got currently in your home, they so you can it. really enjoy it, as you said, and love it. Mm -hmm. And the chalk paint is a great way to do that. There are some beautiful colors, yes. too. Yes. So why don't we head over and we can look at those right now? Sure, let's do that. So just a quick apology for our uh, Blue Water Radio listeners. We can't really describe orange other than a beautiful orange. <laughs> we'll do our best. <laughs> we'll do our best. Actually, Annie has given them very 
evocative names. That, yes, yes, yeah. Are reflective of. But really make sure you come in uh, and talk and see the, the beautiful colors of the chalk paint here. There is something for every decor. And the reason it's called chalk paint, Jennifer, you mentioned it's not chalkboard paint, and that's correct. It's called chalk paint because it has a matte velvety finish. It's the feel of it. It feels chalky. It does not contain chalk. It's a water-based paint. And there are 32 colors in Annie's um, palette now. We have them sort of arranged um, by the rainbow instead of alphabetically at the moment. But we've painted each of these little cherubs to show you what is in the cans. And all the 32 colors are extremely mixable. You don't... Um, there's no black pigment in any of them. Even the graphite is meant to be just a very soft charcoal. It's not a black. Mm -hmm. So you can do mix any of these and not get mud. You just get another gorgeous color. And we're doing a lot of mixing in the back. We teach workshops too to show people how to mix their own and do that kind of thing. I must say that today I am I'm kind of drawn to the uh, the Provence. Isn't it beautiful? Provence. It is a it's color. a beautiful color. <laughs> Little did I know I was going to coordinate today mm -hmm. with my outfit. Mm. Well, this is great, and you you do workshops. Do you have an idea of when your workshops will be starting? They've already started. We've already run four in the Hanover location, even though we've only been open a couple of weeks. So um, we do have an April schedule, and we're trying to do, because we don't know people here yet, and I don't know how many people work shift or how many people are available in the day or in the evening, we're trying to do uh, both. We're doing daytime, we're doing afternoon, we're doing some evenings, we're trying a couple of weekend things, just to see what works for people in the Hanover area. And we will tweak and adjust our schedule as need be. Also, if anyone has uh, three or four people that they want to get together, but they can only do a certain time, let us know. If we can get a trainer there, we will accommodate. And all of us are trained in the Concarden store and the Hanover store are all trained to deliver these workshops. So the workshop for the chalk paint would be a great idea maybe for bridesmaids oh, to come in to like do that, that. Yes. or a um, like a, a multi-generational, you know, grandmother and, and yes. mother and daughters yes. could come in and do that all together um, to learn some really, you know, interesting techniques and maybe create together uh, a beautiful piece. I, we actually have um, boards that we show people what they learned. We, at the moment, we offer two different workshops, a 101, the basics, and we teach four techniques, and, uh, and it's three hours long, and after a 101, you can go home and paint pretty much anything. Like you've got the techniques, you know how to get different looks. A smooth, modern, urban look, um, a two-color distressed, a more rustic, darkened finish if you want something to really look old, and then we do color wash over gilded molding. So those four techniques, you can go and do anything you want. In our 102, we're offering fewer 102s at the moment because everybody in Hanover is still learning. Uh, in our 102, we do fancy stuff, craquelure, decoupage, stenciling, gilding, or foiling, or gold leafing as people call it, so that you can then do your basic stuff and then you can embellish as you like and create your own beautiful pieces one at home mm -hmm. and yeah definitely one of a kind custom pieces that are gonna fit your decor that you can't get anywhere that else, no one else can duplicate. conversation starters Absolutely. Yes. Yes. yes yes well let's take a little tour of the store and see what else they have to offer here at Jadorn so here we are, you have very unique uh, little children's section as well. Yes, there are some beautiful toys um, that look like ones that I have seen you know, at my grandparents' <laughs> home that my parents That's played with. Because they are, Jennifer. A lot of these companies are using the same factories they use to make like the Bozo Bopper, the punching bag that we had when we were little. Um, the tin kaleidoscopes, the little robots, the jack-in-the-boxes, all the classic toys. Um, there's not cardboard or anything like that. There's wind-up mice and all kinds of cute things. We also have a lot of beautiful costumes. These are all handmade in Waterloo, and the woman does a beautiful job. One of the popular ones is this little tutu for babies because photographers love this, actually. It's soft, soft, soft on it the baby's is. skin. Oh, yeah. So it's soft on their skin, but it's thick enough to hide the diaper in a photo. So a lot of people like those. And then people get them and they keep them for years and years, put them in their tickle trunk. Doesn't matter how old your kids get, there's always going to be somebody at the house who wants to wear a costume or just play dress up or something like that. And these little toys, you just add your imagination and you go. I'm in my 30s and I still play dress up. I know, so. dress up's good. It's a lot of fun, why not? Mm -hmm. So Corrine, it smells beautiful back here. And once again, apologies to our, our viewers and listeners. We don't have smell o vision <laughs> just TV. yet. Not yet, um, but yeah, it is gorgeous back here. I smell flowers and just 
but dreams light. it's very light it's very airy it's not overpowering i'm not feeling smothered i'm glad you noticed that and that's by it yeah Jennifer. we do that very specifically and we did it in our kincardin store too there's nothing worse than you walk into a mall and you're just accosted with somebody spraying things on you we did not want that so all the scents we carry at jadorn are very exclusive you won't even find them at holt renfrew we have um Soap from Italy, we have some colognes from Italy, even including a gorgeous men's cologne called 1869, which is the year that company was founded, Acacapa. We carry Savon de Marseille soaps, liquid soaps, and hand soaps. They've been made the same way for centuries and centuries in Marseille, France. We have some lines from um, the United States, some beautiful hand-wrapped parchment soaps. Once you try um, a beautiful triple-milled pure oil soap, pure vegetable oil soap, you'll never go back to like a grocery restore soap again they just they spoil you we have bubble baths we have colognes but all very very light and chosen to be light the other thing we do is we have um very often a customer will know what she's sensitive to, whether it's lavender or some ingredient. So we keep a magnifying glass because we're all older and we can't read these tiny little words on all these things. So we keep it there so we can identify if a, a perfume she's interested in has the ingredient that bothers her or not. So, But I have had very many customers in Kincardine and hopefully in Hanover now too that were sensitive to fragrance. Not only can they come in and enjoy the perfumery, but they often find that there's a scent they can wear again, and they denied themselves that pleasure for years, and they're thrilled to be able to do it again. We also have a brand new line from Canada called Barefoot Venus, uh, which is this line here. And different um, bath soaks, therapeutic um, bath bombs, um, some body butters, and they're just they're lovely, they're wonderful. I think we're gonna do something big with that maybe sometime this summer. And just a, a quick comment, I'm in love with the labels the on those two. Uh, I am a pinup at heart, and these are just, they're fun, and they're gorgeous to have on display in your bathroom as well. Smell this one. I know it's <laughs> it doesn't work for your viewers, but that was the therapeutic oh, one. I know. That's nice. I know. And you know what? It doesn't even get close to the name, which says mustard bath. Mustard bath. Yeah, yeah. that's right. It is a mustard bath. It doesn't bath. smell like French's. No. <laughs> so here we are in the workshop now to, um, to learn all those amazing techniques you were talking about with the chalk paint. So this is where you would come with a group or your friends. So how many people can you accommodate at a time? We can accommodate up to six people. We just reconfigure the, the tables a little bit and we can fit in. Um, in Kincardine we can accommodate about seven. So we just have the spaces just a little bit wider. So. Um, yeah, we can do a good fun crowd and, and everybody loves to see what each other creates and comes up with and they, they do their sample boards and they try colors they never would have thought of before. We push them to a little bit to get a bit out of their comfort zone and try something a little different and that's when they realize how much fun it is and they start really getting into it and really having a blast. So if I was interested in coming and, and doing the workshop, what's the cost involved? It's $85 plus tax, so with the HST brings it to $96.05. That gives you three hours, the instructor full-time for three hours, all your materials, everything is supplied. You don't need to bring a single solitary thing, except sometimes people maybe bring running shoes or slippers so they're comfortable. And I usually tell them to bring like a little uh, plastic bag or a tote bag to take their sample boards home in. Incredibly reasonable very, yeah. for, for three hours. City. It's more in the city, but we're trying to, we're in small towns in Kincardine and Hanover, and we want it to be accessible. So thank you for inviting us to come in and, and view your beautiful shop. Um, what are your hours? Oh, Jadorn is open the same hours in Kincardin as Hanover, 10 until 6 every day on Sundays and stat holidays. We're open from 11 till 4. In the summertime in Kincardin, we are open later um, Thursday, Fridays and Saturdays and, of course, Pipe Band Saturday. It remains to be seen what we'll do with our summer hours in Hanover, but they will likely be longer. But it's always 10 till 6 every day, 11 to 4 Sundays and holidays. Well, thanks for having us and inviting us to come down and, and view your beautiful shop. Oh, thank you, Jennifer. I'm so pleased you came and we've been delighted to meet everyone from Hanover that's come through our doors and we hope we'll meet everyone else soon. Thanks very much. Hi, it's Jen again and I'm here talking with John Grant. Congratulations. You have been chosen to be a torch runner for this year's Pan Am Games. Where are you meeting the torch? 
Um, I'm actually the tentative date is in June in Owen Sound, and I haven't had any further details yet. But I think as it gets closer, they'll bring us up to speed. So we know that you do so much for our community and you're a great representative of Hanover and the area to go and, and meet the torch and it's quite an honor too. It's not a very big list of people that get to do this, just like the Olympic torch running. Do you have an idea about how far you'd be able to carry the torch? Um, I've heard it's about 200 meters and I am very honored to have this privilege to carry the torch and uh, I think it's amazing. Well congratulations once again and we wish you the best of luck. Thank you. I'm here today with Margaret Post from the uh, Hanover Community Players, the chair for the Hanover Community Players. And Margaret, uh, this community organization, the Community Players, have been in the area a long time. And uh, can you give me a little bit of the history behind it? Uh, yes, we actually started in uh, 2006. Uh, it was sort of at the tail end of one of the shows that I was involved with at the high school. And uh, one of the adults said, you know, there's, there's no theater for adults. There's lots of stuff for teens and kids. So we sort of tossed it around, put an ad in the paper, and had a meeting, and we had something like 25 people show up. And that's how the Hanover Community Players was born. And so how many shows do you guys try to put on uh, during the season? Uh, we do two productions a year. Um, the Civic Theatre uh, is owned by the town of Hanover, and so we don't really have control of it. We actually rent space in it, as do the other groups that use it. And uh, so we all have to get along, and we have our own little specific areas that uh, of time that we can use the theatre. So... Um, Especially, too, with us being volunteer. By the time you've done two productions, that's enough. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Now, uh, having said that, you said it was volunteer. So is it complete volunteer? There's no paid people on the community players? That's right. It's completely volunteer. We rely on gate receipts uh, from tickets to uh, fund ourselves. And uh, actually, when we started out in 2006, we each put in $100. That's how we got started. And uh, so what happens then is that you try and get as many volunteers as you can, and uh, you pick plays and musicals and things like that, and uh, hope that you get the volunteers to come out and help you out. And you've put on some great productions, too. Uh, last season, I saw Bye Bye Birdie in person. That was amazing uh, and then to all of a sudden realize while you're watching these are all volunteers that are putting this on it it was like really really well done it was we have some uh, magnificent talent in the area and uh, we are called Hanover community players and the idea is that it's not just Hanover it's the community who are involved in theater and so we draw people from all the way around the area uh, so one of the things we like is that, too, we have people who are adult, we have teenagers, and we have kids. And we really like doing that for our shows, particularly in the Christmas season. Um, Bye Bye Birdie was a little bit of an exception. We had um, a few people that were, uh, you know, young people. And then, of course, we had to fill in with <laughs> whoever else we could get. And uh, But we had uh, fabulous music director, Corrine Ringenberg, mm -hmm. and, um, uh, you know, people doing sound and uh, musicians that she'd gotten together. And again, all the musicians were all volunteer. Right, right. Every single person volunteered the time. And they were rehearsing three times a week right. to do that. So one thing people may not realize when they go to see a show or hear about the community players, you don't need just volunteers for the actors and actresses, the parts on the stage. You need volunteers to do lighting, sound, help set up, tear down, make sets, right? That's right. Uh, you don't realize until you actually get into theater just how much work there is. I always liken it to a pyramid. The actors on the stage are the pinnacle, mm -hmm. but it's everybody else that is underneath that puts it all together. I mean, from uh, getting the advertising for the program, uh, getting publicity out, uh, creating posters, getting tickets, uh, you know, volunteering at the box office, things like that. So all those kinds of things happen. And uh, sometimes, you know, uh, particularly when I, I had this at school, um, the kids sometimes would say, oh, well, you know, you're just 
backstage people. You're not all that important. And I would come back at them and say, look, without all these people helping you out, you're on the stage naked in the dark with nothing to say and nobody to watch you. So that's what we uh, we do. We make sure that uh, everything comes together. Yeah. Now, if somebody did want to volunteer, how could they go about contacting you guys? Well, the easiest way is to uh, go on the web. We actually have our own website, www.hanovercommunityplayers.ca. And uh, there is a contact us uh, email. And then we get it, and uh, we direct it to the person that uh, needs to deal with that. We've just gone through an or a reorganization because what happened was that... Uh, some of our, our uh, again, volunteer members on the board were carrying way too much, uh, uh, you know, activity, and it was taking over their lives. So what we're doing right now is trying to, uh, you know, subdivide it out. So we actually have a volunteer coordinator, and uh, so things will get directed there. And then as we find that, uh, you know, oh, we need some people for box office, we contact the volunteer coordinator and see if she's got somebody that is interested in box office. So that's the way we'd like to do it. Again, we're just starting it, and unfortunately we're doing it right in the middle of a production, but it had to be done. And uh, do you also do the membership still too, where people can join as a member to help support the community players? Yes, we do. Our memberships are quite low. It's $15 for a single membership and $20 for a family membership, and that goes for a year. And uh, then what we have been working on is something that we call a sustaining membership. And that is $60 a year. And if it's a single, then uh, you get, um, what, $40 uh, that uh, is a tax receipt or $45 as a tax receipt so that you're helping us to uh, keep on going because as I said before it's just ticket sales and uh, that keep us going and another thing that uh, we are really proud of is the fact that uh, yes we are a registered charity but we also give money away and one of the programs that we instituted a number of years ago is that one dollar from every adult ticket sold to our productions is uh, channeled into another charitable organization in the area. Um, the Christmas show and this upcoming show, we are uh, donating money to The Loft, which is a recreational program for people who have uh, had to deal with mental illness. So. We do that, and we buy equipment. We just bought some new equipment for, uh, along with Carrie Moore School of Dance for the theater. So we're always trying to be good people, mm -hmm. good community organization, help other people out. But I think one of the big things that I would really like to see is a lot more bums in seats so that we can continue to do that. For sure. Well, thank you very much for your time, Mark. Thank you. So I'm here with Rebecca Walker, the director of the upcoming play that uh, is happening at the end of May, right? Last two weekends of May. And what is the, the play's name? Nana's Naughty Knickers. Oh it's a play about a grandmother and her granddaughter is coming to visit her for the summer before she goes and starts law school. And she discovers that her grandmother has started making and selling her own lingerie for senior citizens. And uh, she is going to be evicted from her apartment if her landlord discovers that she's running a business from it. So her lawyer granddaughter is, well, not only appalled that grandma is making lingerie, but also appalled that grandma might get evicted. So hilarity ensues from there. As you're describing the story, that's what first thought came to mind. Comedy, of course, right? Absolutely. The uh, grandma's apartment is... Uh, was designed by a bootlegger, so it's got secret compartments where she can hide things, and of course anyone who has a play about an 83-year-old woman who wears lingerie is, uh, better be comedy. <laughs> <laughs> So um, the tickets, uh, oh, well, first let's go with uh, when is the play actually? Where are the dates that the play's on? Uh, the play runs on the last two weekends of May. Okay. Um, I don't remember the exact numbers. Um, and our first show is a Thursday preview. That we always do a preview show of our shows. It, the Christmas show is always a children's show, and we invite the elementary students. Oh, cool. And for our spring show, we tend to invite the senior citizens' homes, and they bring a bus over and come and see the preview show. And then there will be a Friday, Saturday night, and a Sunday matinee of each of the two weekends uh, at the end of May. <laughs> Thank you. 
Adam Olivero here at the Youth Technology and Activity Center. We're actually standing in, I believe this is Brittany's office, maybe. This is going to be my office. Oh, this is going to be Jacinda's office. Right, Brittany's is next door, right? From Youth Roots. Yes, actually, Brittany's going to be in, uh, she's our connection with you, so she's going to be in the front room, oh. and she's going to be at reception to welcome them when they come in. Okay. And I should actually say I'm here with Jacinda, uh, part of the Youth Technology and Activity Center, and uh, we're visiting again, and there's actually walls and color in here now. It's yeah. gorgeous. What, uh, what's, you're getting very close to the opening day in May, right? We are. We're getting really close. We're uh, hoping to actually physically move in by the end of next week. And we have the renovations coming along very quickly. The, we're looking at now trying to see if we can get the back room, the large back room, renovated to be usable. Because right now it's not usable. Right. So we're l working on grants and working on you know, getting a quote so that we can see if we can get that implemented by May, June. And some of the other things is some of the equipment that the youth will be using is arriving too, right? Some of the Macs have come in. Yes, all our eight Macs have arrived and we're looking forward to be able to put it in into the nice room and get it up and going. And having maybe some volunteers like yourself to be able to provide some programming and uh, skill development for the youth. So one of the exciting things that's happening is you've got some volunteer um, people coming to the organization. There's myself, Adam Olivero from Whiteman Telecom, and I'm happy to do video editing, video production with students that are interested in maybe making a couple of YouTube videos or volunteering with Whiteman's or just getting into TV. Uh, I would be happy to do that. And there's a couple of more too that have signed on, right? Yeah, we have uh, Ethan Bender that's going to provide his photography skills. Um, and we also have uh, Golden Tiger. So the, uh, the staff and owner of Golden Tiger have come by and they would like to provide uh, a program for the youth in kickboxing. And it's kind of a mutual benefit for us, for the, for the members, and for their business as well. So we're looking for more partnerships and we hope that this can b benefit others. And by partnerships, you mean not just even corporate. There's a lots of corporate sponsors already, and you guys are getting lots of stuff. But you're never going to turn anybody down. Come to the door if they want to. But uh, but the other one is just people like myself that want to volunteer their time, and they could have any kind of skill to try and bring to the table. Just meet with you, right? Yeah. So it's it's more if you have a skill, then come and have a conversation with me and see if it's something that the youth would be in, would be interested in. Our main uh, goal is to have youth directed initiatives. So if it's something, it might be a skill that you have but it may not be uh, as significant now but it might be later on so it's good people are contacting me they're telling me they have a skill uh, individuals from the probus group some in retired individuals that want to pass on their skills they've told me I've taken their name and hopefully we can impl implement the program later on excellent well thank you very much for your time thank you Adam appreciate it I'm here at the Youth Activity and Technology Center with fellow Whiteman's employee, Hope Robertson, the marketing manager for Whiteman Telecom. And Hope, what is the, uh, Whiteman's role here in the Youth Activity and Technology Center? We are so excited to be partnering with the town of Hanover on this incredible one-of-a-kind project. Uh, and for right now, Whiteman uh, is really proud to be part of it from the ground level up. Uh, one of the things that we are doing is promoting the center through uh, our local Whiteman community TV, which everyone's watching right now, uh, as well as uh, giving coverage uh, through the What's Happening program uh, and also working on some future projects uh, that will be an enhancement uh, supporting youth education, which is one of the areas that Whiteman gives to. So we're really excited to be part of this project and all of the work that Savannah and now Jacinda are putting into it. It's, it's phenomenal just to see it all come together. For sure. Now, the one, uh, intra one really cool part is Whiteman says fiber optics to the home in Hanover, of course. So that's uh, another big part in the technology of the technology center, right? Absolutely. And it's great. The center has uh, Whiteman Telecom's fiber to the home to it. Uh, we will also be the exclusive provider of services here. So your phone, your internet, possibly TV service. Uh, it's going to be fantastic. Uh, the computer labs, both on the Mac side and the PC side, are going to be outfitted with fiber. So no limits on the speed uh, and any of the other internet technology projects that come up, they will be facilitated with with Whiteman's Fiber. So it's it's a fantastic initiative and it's a great demonstration of what Whiteman's Fiber can do. Awesome, great. Thank you for your time, Hope. Thank you. Thank you for joining us, Adam and Jennifer Olivero, for What's Happening in Hanover. If you have suggestions, comments, or looking to be on the show, please contact us at 519-506- 9502. Thank you for listening and watching What's Happening in Hanover. 
brought to you by the Town of Hanover, Hanover Chamber of Commerce, 91.3 FM Blue Water Radio, and Whiteman TV. What's happening in Hanover is heard on 91.3 FM Blue Water Radio at 6 p.m. Wednesdays and showing daily on Whiteman TV, Channel 6.